All right, time to start. Hello, everyone. Welcome to second webinar at Materials Care. Uh, this is Mingyu Park, in charge of Chief Scientific Officer in Virtual Lab. Today, this webinar will be start from the introduction to phonons, and educational manager will be let you know how to calculate phonons in materials care. I expect this webinar will be taken one hour. Uh, I start from the introduction of phonon theory and then a tutorial session, and finally we can get a, a question and answers. What is a phonon? Uh, definition of phonons is usually collective excitation of atoms or molecule in condensed matter phase or a crystal vibrational field. Quasi-particle is the excited state of quantized mode of vibration. Uh, you can see the, this figure on top of the here. And uh, there are some excited state is energy is quantized. This kind of things are quasi-particle. For example, electron, phonon, photon, magnon, or roton, something like that. And you can see a uh, figure in here. I, I, I lot the uh, atoms in there. And atoms are interact with each other, have some periodicity in here. And also, attractive force are consistently changed. This kind of springs is a uh, force in here. So, latest vibration is defined by uh, periodicity and attractive force are consistent changes. This is called a latest vibration. Phonon dispersion is the latest vibration, it can be expressed by the phonon dispersion. And phonon dispersion is, can be a far, uh, phonon frequency as a function of wave vectors, uh, like uh, something like the, uh, this figure. You can see that this figure is the phonon frequency. Uh, you can, uh, this is a wave vector, it's gamma to k is a high symmetry point. And this y axis is the frequency, it's unit of uh, terahertz or some inverse centimeters. So uh, what is the acoustic phonon here? Acoustic phonon is uh, defined by the coherent, like in-phase movement of the atoms in the lattice. Uh, by the way, the optical phonons are out of phase movement of the atoms in the lattice. For example, in this phonon dispersion relations, you can see the uh, gamma points of uh, phonons uh, are represented in here. And for example, there are uh, three acoustic phonons are the gamma points, and uh, three of those are optical phonons. So you can see that this kind of uh, uh, acoustic phonons are here. They the atoms, the neighbor atoms move the same direction, like these directions, and these directions, and this direction, okay? This is acoustic phonon movement. Uh, neighbor atoms and the atoms are moved the same phase. We call the coherent movement. However, optical phonons is a little bit different characteristic are uh, appears. Uh, for example, this, this, and this is the three optical phonons are represented in here. And for example, this one is uh, 900, this is 160, and this is the 160, 6400 for inverse centimeters phonons. They movement are opposite direction, like this and this. In this case, at this and this. So this kind of movement are optical phonons movement that we call the outer phase movement. Uh, I want to explain more about the acoustic and uh, optical phonons. Acoustic phonons, you can see the graph here, like a phonon dispersion graph. Acoustic phonon is a, a zero frequency at the brilliant zone center, and it dominates the thermal transport. Basically, due to the large phonon group velocity and or a long phonon relaxation time makes a, a thermal transport in acoustic phonon is dominates. Uh, in case of optical phonons, Optical phonon in the frequency at the brilliant zone center uh, is not, uh, not zero. So uh, someone asking for the why is the optical. So I want to explain this example. Uh, for neighboring atoms are moved opposite direction, we assume that. In the ionic crystal case, atoms have opposite charge. Like uh, one atom has the positive charge in here, something like this. And another ionic system neighbor atoms have a negative charge. This is the ionic system. It's creating a time-bearing electrical dipole moment we call infraactive, also Laman active. Uh, that is why we call the optical phonons. And also we have some example for the graphene. Graphene has a two atoms in a primitive cell. 
total six degree of freedom x y z, z directions so total degree of freedom is the six it has three acoustic branch and another is optical branches uh, so how could we calculate the phonon dispersions usually phonon has a two transverse mode and one longitudinal mode Total degree of freedom is 3n degree of freedom with three acoustic phonons and 3n minus three optical phonon modes. The frequency omega has a time dependence, so we can express by the exponential i omega t and wave vector k have a dispersion relation. All least wave have the described by the uh, first brilliant zone. First brilliant pi to pi over a. So we can see the uh, here is gamma and minus a to minus a to uh, plus plus a plus pi. So this is called the plus Boolean zone. So uh, classically, we can. Uh, there are so many scientists uh, developed the uh, uh, phonon mode calculations. So it's very a uh, representative model is Einstein model and by model. So Einstein model assume that uh, all phonon modes are have the same energy. And also, uh, it can very good uh, approximation for the optical branch. In the optical branch case, it's like this is the optical branch for the, this case. So Einstein model assumes that all frequencies are same. So Einstein model is, can be a very good assumption for the optical phonons. How about uh, the Dubai models? The Dubai model is very good description for the acoustic phonon modes. So it assumes the linear dispersion of the omega, at the, uh, so k as a function of omega. For example, in here, the uh, Dubai model is the assume that the linear dispersion is a function of the uh, wave vector. So linear relationship is really good approximation for the acoustic branch rather than the Einstein model. The Dubai model can be, uh, uh, can be calculate the density of state by this equation. However, uh, there are some Dubai model and also Einstein model have some limitation for the very high or very uh, low frequency. I explain for the dielectric constant, we call some, someone called the relative permittivity and also a von effective charge there. So what is the relative permittivity? Uh, usually is how easily material can become polarized by the imposition of the electric field on the insulator. So this value can be defined by this equation like uh, because this is a relative value of the vacuum level. So, uh, for example, you can see this figure in here. Uh, what if we have some external field on the uh, dielectric? There are some polarization will appear. So this this area will be like, for example, minus charge, negative charge, and this area have the positive charge. This is called the uh, like uh, permittivities. So in the material scale, we also calculate uh, uh, this kind of things. Uh, by using the phonon calculations. And especially in quantum, uh, quantum espresso, uh, you use the, this epsilon true tag will be calculate the uh, uh, dielectric constant. Also, I want to introduce the electron phonon coupling coefficient in here. Uh, why is the significant in uh, this lambda coefficient? Because it's a microscopic characteristic of matter is very important such as the renormalized electron mass on the Fermi surface or electron specific in a, at low temperature. However, a most important thing is a critical superconducting transition temperature, Tc, can be calculated from the lambda coefficient. Uh, I want to explain a, like a, a little bit of uh, complex formula in here. It's a critical temperature can be calculated by this formula, but you can see the here lambda coefficient including in here, here, and here, or so the by temperature in here, but main figure is uh, depending on the lambda coefficients. So we, what if we want to calculate the critical temperature, we should know the lambda coefficients. So lambda coefficient is a basic parameter for the calculate the critical temperatures. So how to calculate the lambda coefficient? Lambda coefficient is coming from the, this alpha f function, we call the Elashberg spectral function, it's alpha r plus square f, from the, this, this kind of thing. So alpha square f is, is a Lashberg spectral fun function can be calculate uh, this kind of very complex equation. So in our 
in our service, like material scale can be calculated uh, in the metal, metal system, we also calculate this coefficient directly. All right, next part is the methodology. Uh, in the phonon calculation, there are two methodologies is exist in here. Uh, first method is the finite displacement method, and second method is a linear response method we call the DFPT. So our first method, the finite displacement method, is to make a supercell with a, a small displacement, and then calculate atomic forces and grab it, and then make some interatomic force constant to describe the uh, vibrational properties. Uh, if you have interested or uh, more details, you can refer to this paper. Uh, in case of the DFPT, so perturbation theory, in the especially uh, quantum, uh, quantum espresso used the density functional perturbation theory. This is direct calculation of second order derivative of the energy, and also uh, it's a little bit different, but uh, basically uh, it should be the value or result of the calculation it should be same. So if you have any interesting for the, this methodology. Uh, you should refer to uh, this paper. All right, next part is the quantum espresso in the phonon code. Uh, in the quantum espresso, uh, they calculate the normal mode at the given Q vector, uh, which means I want to explain one thing. The meaning of the given Q vector is the, like, uh, for example, we have, we have some, uh, we imagine this is the reciprocal lattice. So we have some, this kind of lattice in the reciprocal lattice. But uh, in fundamentally, we should calculate all points in here, like this point, this point, and this point, and this point. But it is very, it takes very long time to calculate. So uh, we have some divide by some meshes like this, and this, and this, in the same direction, this, this, this and then we can calculate all point in here. And in, how about this point? And uh, we use a Fourier transform and uh, interpolate this area of the value to get the uh, all properties is the less properties. This is the like a normal, calculate the normal mode that given Q point in here. So how about the progressing steps? If you want to calculate the phonons, you should uh, find the ground state first. It means relaxations of atomic structures and then calculation phonons by using density functional perturbation theory, and then grab this value to calculate the interatomic force constant. When you finish the, uh, this calculation to get a, a force constant, you can uh, have some the force processing, and then uh, finally you can get a, like a phonon dispersion or some density of state dielectric constant, something like this. In this case, you cannot calculate the uh, phonons like a U calculation or hybrid functional uh, external field or constraint on magnetization. So ultra soft or PAW stop potential. This cannot be used high order response calculation. High order uh, response calculation means the, not a second order calculate the sec uh, second order in terms of first constant calculation, uh, like a, a third order or fourth order. This means high order response calculation. Uh, this calculation is kind of some unharmonic property calculation. So uh, usually like a density of phonon density of state or some uh, band structure is not, uh, not this case, another case. And also uh, we provide this kind of uh, properties in the materials care, but there are some limitation for the pseudo potentials. NC is the unknown conserving, this is ultra soft. This is a PAW types. For example, uh, I want to calculate the polarizability. You only use the NC and or US. NC means in here, like in, in this here, LDA plus GJ, and US, US potential with uh, two is the LDA, GJ plus ultra, ultra, ultra pseudo potential can be used this calculation. So there are some, you should know about that, uh, some limitation of the uh, phonon calculation in material scale. All right, how about uh, what, what purpose can be uh, get from the phonon calculation? This basic property is the phonon dispersion and dose. 
and dielectric constant, effective charge, and electron phonon coefficient lambda can be uh, obtained properties in material sphere. Phonon dispersion is this kind of some uh, graph I already mentioned before. So, way of translation, so you can describe this kind of graph. So, but uh, one thing is you should know about that uh, these kind of things uh, appear in your calculation. Uh, which means this is the system is unstable. So this means the, like uh, this value. So for example, this is omega. It's like uh, lower than zero. This is the like uh, not probable value, which means the structure is very unstable. And this is phonon density of states. The number of modes is the unique frequency range is called the density of mode or some generally phonon density of states. So you can get in from the total phonon density of like a total red value or some partial uh, phonon density of state like the yellow uh, solid line is showing here. You can also calculate uh, by using material scale. And also if you want to calculate the dielectric constant, then you can get a value for the as a tensor if this is uh, you can see that this value in here, this is not, not the same, so which means uh, this system is not isotropic. On, uh, on not isotropic, that is the unisotropic. And also you can get an effective charge, is the bone effective charge. This is also, we provide this kind of matrix in here and here uh, as a function of atoms. And so if you're interested in the effective charge in, uh, for each atoms, you can get this uh, tensor effective charge value. And finally, uh, if uh, someone interested in uh, lambda coefficient calculation, uh, we provide, uh, I already mentioned, alpha square f function uh, as a function of frequency can be plot uh, or post processing. And if you want to know about the specific value of lambda or some alpha square f or some like, like a a formula level density of state, uh, you can get uh, this uh, kind of value uh, by text. All right, so uh, my session will be finished in here. So next session will be tutorial session. So some of you are the preparing some web browser or something. Uh, Hello, I'm Margot Miu, the education major of materials care. In this section, you will learn about how you can perform phonon calculation in materials square. In this time, I'll progress this tutorial with assume that you already know the basic use method of materials square. So if you need such information, please refer to our previous webinar video. Before starting the tutorial, please open your web browser and enter matsq.com. The material square is optimized for Google Chrome. You can use the Safari or Firefox, but the Internet Explorer is not recommended. And if you can, it is good to view the screen, this screen and the material square side by side. Before starting the calculation, I'll explain this workflow. The phonon calculation is two-step process. Phonon should start with a ground state atomic and electronic configurations. So after making the model, you should perform the optimizing calculation with very accurate input settings. And then, at the phonon module and start phonon calculation. In the phonon module, the SSF calculation automatically performed to obtain a more accurate ground state electronic structure. And from that, the phonon calculation will be performed using density function and fortification theory. In this step, phonon frequency and dielectric tensors and effective charge and internal impulse constant will be obtained. Post-process calculation will be performed. In here, phonon dispersion and phonon dose and electron phonon coefficient, the lambda constant, will be obtained. 
and the basic description is done. I'll proceed with this tutorial based on this workflow. Now, please move to Metals Square. And as we mentioned, we'll give tutorial credit to each user. To set that, please follow my description. First, go to the account page. Then you can see this account section. At the billing option, click this and change that to webinar 2 and your mail address. Click that and write the, your password in here and press done. And OK. Then uh, at the top of the page, you can see the credit became $50 and green. You can use this gift credit until April 22nd. Now, please go to the work page. Then add a new work. Then you can see this structure built on module. Um, we are obtained the following result of silicon. So you should model the unit cell for silicon. The phone calculation takes very long calculation time, so it is better making primitive cell. Reset icon. And select silicon and generate that. Then the silicon conventional cell appears. So to make a primitive cell, please go to the cell tab and click the primitive icon. Then you can see this primitive cell of silicon. And as I mentioned, before starting phonon calculation, we should perform structure optimization first. So, as the quantum express module, and click the structure builder to connect. And you can see this quantum express module. We should set the if script. So select high impression question and next select the ionic cell optimization in structure optimization. Then the if script appears. And we should change this, this and this and this, this values. First, change the first threshold value like this. And change with the cutoff energies. First, the wave function code of energy changed to 50. And four hundred Lidberg for charge density energy code of and change the occupations to fixed. Because the silicon is a semiconductor, so we we'll assume the occupation of electrons is fixed. And next, change the convergence threshold to 
like this. It is the same to it is the same to this value. And the last setting is K point grid. When calculating phonon, you should set Q point. The Q point grid number should be vector of the K point grid. So in this time, set that as 12 and 12 and 12. Then the accurate setting is done. And write the jump name. Click the start jump. Now the first step is finished. The job will be finished within 10 minutes. We'll wait for the job to finish. Until that, if you have questions, please let us know. I think the your job is finished. Then we should update the job status. So back to the Quantum Express module and press this update button and check this status bar. If you can see this, this job is has been finished normally. Matches, then it was successfully done. And uh, I changed the force threshold and cut off energies and convergence threshold and escape point grid to make a more accurate DFD calculation. And the occupation changed to fixed because we are calculated direct constant and effective charge for them. The system is become non metal. So if you set these occupations as a fixed, then the system is non metal. And if you can see this message, then the relaxation job is finished. Minimize the module and Please add the phonon module at the module selector. And this message is shown. Click the quantum express module to connect. Then you can see this PWS shaft area and phonon area. As I mentioned at the workflow, the SCF calculation be performed in phonon module. The area is for that. And this phonon area is for first is commodity threshold. It is for phonon calculation. The basic setting is this. But be careful about the result when changing this value. This value directly affects to the result. And next is Q point. The Q point is a wave vector for phonon calculation, like wave point. It is, should be set in the same way to K point. It means that the cell parameters and Q point have inversely proportional also. In this time, set the Q point as 6 and 6 and 6. And next is other phonon properties. If the system is metal, you can calculate the electron phonon coupling coefficient. But if the system is non metal, you can calculate the electric constant and effective charge. In this time, we will calculate this. And next step is post-processing. 
you can add the post processing tab in here. If you click this plus button, you can add this tab. And in this tab, you can set the and the path and the scale point. It is the same as the normal band structure setting. So you should select the crystal system and the proper number of K points and the high symmetry point. In this time, we will set the number of K point as 50 and the band path is gamma xk gamma so click the empty button first and click the gamma and x and k then the gamma remains but the last gamma point is have no next point so you should set the number of k points as one to so change the value as one and click gamma then the band facility is done and you should set the those k points this is k points not q point so you can change this value the k points don't need to set same as q point so I'll set it as two times. And the formal setting is finished. Enter the job name and name. And press the start job button. Then the follow calculation is started, but it takes a lot of time. So now, please back to the presentation. Now your follow calculation is started. The follow calculation will finish it around two hours or three hours. Please refer our YouTube to analyze your result after the calculation finishes. I'll show the calculation result in this tutorial presentation. You can obtain these properties from phonon module. First is phonon dispersion. After the job finishing, you can see this phonon dispersion in the this post process step. The total number of bands is depends on the number of atoms in primitive in this set. When the crystal structure is unstable, negative value will be appear in here. And next is phonon density of states. It means the number of modes in each frequency range. So it is called density of modes also. And if you set this grid is too small, the those graph shape is not broad, then uh, you should increase the number of K points. And next is dielectric constant. If the system is non metal, you can obtain the dielectric constant and effective charge. The dielectric constant is can find at the here, this PWS shape and phonon tab. It is in the form of a matrix because it is a tensor. Below that, you can find the effective charge data. And besides these properties, you can get this electron phonon coupling coefficient if the system is metal. And if you perform the phonon calculation with the lambda coefficient, you can see the lambda tab at the, this post process tab. 
this data contains the Fleischberg spectral function and the constant value at each degauss value. Then now the Pollan tutorial is finished. Next, I'll explain about the Palomi contest. After the calculation finishing, post your data on metal scale open list. If randomly the winner, the first prize is a thousand dollars of credits. To participate in this contest, you should use this open research page. To upload your data to here, you should publish your data. When you finish the job, you can see the this data. Then you're ready to participate to the contest. In the work, click the publish. Then the set information pop-up is appears. You should set the title. Then the thumbnail uploaded and set or uh, write the description. And click this publish toggle. Then a message is shown. Click OK and save. Then you can find your data in this open research page. All right, uh, thank you for today. And uh, please, uh, you follow our uh, presentation today, like tutorial today, and then upload uh, our website, materialscare.com, and forums uh, like open research session. And you're gonna be a winner for this uh, uh, webinar today. All right, thank you so much. And uh, next seminar will be announced by email. Thank you so much.